What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Cupid Mike. You're listening to 102.9 Take Deck in collaboration with the Ruckus Podcast. And tonight I got a special episode for y'all. Normally, I would give you a playlist, and every Friday I give you what's you know the mood that type I am, whether it's old school music, what's new on the street, supporting local artists. But um tonight I'm doing something special. Um, as you know, every couple of months I try to bring issues and awareness of what goes on in Cuba. Um, as you know, I'm first descending, first generation Cuban. Both parents are Cuban, and um, you know, just like any other Cuban, they have a story within itself. Um, one thing that, for whatever reason, there's a a voice there that's been either unknown or either unbothered, and people are tone deaf about it, or it's just for whatever reason. Well, I guess we all know the reason here has been silenced, and that's the Black Cuban community. Um, I had this idea for for years, but it's just like I couldn't find anybody. Um, I couldn't get in contact with anyone out here, and especially out here in Massachusetts, with New England as a whole. You basically got to go to either Miami or New Jersey to find yourself a Cuban. So um, thanks to the grace of the internet and social media, I found myself some Cubans, and they all got their own thing going on, and they're all activists within their own right, and they, um, you know, they do what they can for the community, and they also try to bring awareness themselves to, to the community. Um, I'll start off here. I got my man, I'm Angel Reyes. Um, I'm, I'm under suspicion that we could be cousins to like a third generation, something like that. Just understand that we all have the same last name. I got Dami Encarnacion. How do you say your last name? I'm sorry, mama. Encarnacion. Um, Encarnacion. That's the Dominican side. Encarnacion. Yeah, I figured that. I figured that. I figured that. Um, I have yet to meet you yet, but I saw the pictures that you did when you went to November for the November protest out in Boston. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, black woman, got to find her. Got to connect with her. And thanks to the internet, I found you. Um, and right here, I got, I got this man here. I met him back in April, and it was a, a seminar for people that want to get to the movie game. And he was just dropping so much gems um, about the industry and how to break through. And not only that, he's very big. You know, we, there was an event that he did yesterday, and there was one thing that he was constantly saying. If you want to get to the industry, it's not one of those things that we don't have to go to Hollywood in New York because we got talent in Massachusetts. So Hollywood got to come to us now. It's not we got to go to them. And, you know, I, I spoke to him yesterday and we broke bread for a few minutes and I told him that I'm looking for some sort of mentorship. And he looked and he told me I'm looking for mentorship, my damn self. <laughs> but, and, and he got he got like a little flex here that we're going to talk about later on. But, you know, not to drag it on. His name is Naheem Garcia. Thank you for coming through. And last but not least, está, está aquí. Está aquí Candela. Uh, she... Went viral last year. And, you know, I'll, I'll put the clip later on, but, you know, she went in and she was very passionate about the situation that goes on in Cuba, especially after July 11th. And it's been funny because I've been trying to track her down for almost a year, but every time I see her, she has something different with her hair. Like the first video, she had a head wrap. The second time I saw her, she had her hair long. The third time I saw her, she had a haircut. The fourth time I saw her, she had a nose ring. And I thought it was four different black women trying to bring awareness to Cuba. And I found out it was the same lady. <laughs> <laughs> it was the same person. And I only and for some reason I thought we were like somewhere either Miami or in DC or somewhere in outer space, but you're actually not far from us. Yeah. And not <laughs> far from us. And it was funny because I spoke to her um a couple of weeks ago and we had like a 40 minute conversation. Well, really, it was like seven and a half minutes because she spoke to my mom and that became a conversation with itself. And just like always, mom always steals the show. Because mommy's the OG. OG is the OG. And she she pretty gave you. She gave you her life story in 30 minutes. We got to honor that. We, we got to honor, honor that. That's, that's what we're going to take. How, how, is, how is history going to preserve itself if the youth are not listening to the elders? I have exactly. To exactly. And um, yes, I'm sorry. So we got Grecia or Doñez. I got it right? Or Ordoñez? Ordoñez. That's it. Perdón, mi español me está jodido. So yeah. Uh, I've been, I've been so used. Por lo menos lo puede hablar. Te quieto. Por yeah. lo menos lo puede hablar. But um. <laughs> Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, um, I want to start off with Naheem and Grecia, and Grecia because you guys are, are actually born in Cuba. And um, I just want to give you, if you guys would give me like a brief experience, what was life out there and just try to learn, you know, coming out here and navigating to the United States and just the trials and tribulations you guys been through. Naheem? This depends, this depends on who was who who left Cuba at what age. Um, yeah, so- Gracie, I, probably, I can't, I can't out, Gracie, how old was you when you left Cuba? I was 20. Yeah, either. Yo me fui a un año. I know. So she, get, so she takes the floor. She takes the floor. Go ahead. 
I lived 20 years there, 20 years in communism. Mm. <laughs> and I can tell you, uh, indoctrination is a real thing. Um, you know, to cage birds flying is a sickness. And I was, I, I was part of, you know, I used to be the whole Seremo Comoche and stuff like that. I realized through my brother, Guillermo Ordonez, he right, um, right now he resides in um, New Jersey, and he was always part of the opposition. Um, he wrote a book. Uh, the police used to come and, you know, just break into his house and take his literature and stuff like that. It was bad. He was always in Sanja, in the en la Estación de Policía de Sanja. My brother was always there, you know, and uh, through my brother, my eyes started opening and I started become like a little bit vocal, right? My mom was very uncomfortable because fear is a real thing. Um, the black community in Cuba, everybody is under oppression, but the black community in Cuba, I believe is a bit more indoctrinated than the whites. Um, to us, they make us feel like we need to be thankful because outside it's like literally they are teaching us Estocolm syndrome where we love our oppressor because we are protecting you from what's going to happen to you out there. But because we don't know what's going to happen to us out there, especially in the time that I was there, there was no internet, there was nothing. So the only reference you had was people coming from, you know, from overseas, the, the Durita, Los Yuma. Um, whoever had cable and could, you know, little things like that. And in the beginning, there was not even like cable. You couldn't even get cable or the DVDs with the Sabado Gigante and shit like that and las novelas and all of that. that we used to have to buy that and, and, you know, play it like super low so nobody knew we was watching those Calladito. things. Calladito. Uh -huh. So your only source of information was El Noticiero, the news, the local news, you know. When you control the information, you control the narrative. And these people control the narrative for a long, long time. Um, to the point that 2022, in this country, I walk into a room and people still ask me or tell me things like, I didn't know there was black girls in Cuba. Really? Dale. Dale. No, no, the best one is, you don't look Cuban. Oh, then my. tell me something. Mm -hmm. Where does the term mm -hmm. Afro-Cuban come from? If I don't look Cuban and the term Afro-Cuban, especially uh, when we talk about... Uh, yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. Whew. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a sarcasm queen, so I reply back with, oh, so you thought the only black Cuban was Celia Cruz? And, you know, little yeah, things like that. Yeah, you know, I just yeah. you know. But it's, it's a real thing. So now my, um, I wasn't expecting to go viral last year at all. I was not expecting to go viral. Um, that was not in the plans, but I guess it was in the stars. Um, I just got, I just got upset. I got very, very upset. Um, when July 11 happened and the Black Lives Matter organization, the statement that they put out didn't resonate with me. I did not feel mm. identified by a black organization that's supposed to defend me and have my best, my best interest, I did not feel identified. And I just grabbed my phone. I, I had just woken up. I was so upset. I was, I, so I just grabbed my phone and I went to Instagram to rant. I was just ranting. It was a 40 minute long um, live that I did on IG. And uh, somebody, the power of technology now, Somebody, one of my followers, they took the bullet points, the snippets of it, and they did a TikTok, and it blew up from there. A three-minute TikTok, and it blew up from there. And then my fight started. I thought some people say that, oh, my God, you went viral. To me, was my battle started with the Black community in this country. Because now they were calling me sellout. They were calling me all kinds of stuff because how dare you speak against an organization that represents you. I'm not, I'm, I say, no, that's exactly the problem. They are not representing me. They are representing communism. They are, say, they are saying, viva Fidel. Um, one thing I just, you know, I'm sorry, I've been talking so much. No, but, no, go in, go in, go in. No, 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 no. No, it, 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 to me, one thing, um, my goal is to let the black community in this country, right, know 
that um, whatever opinion they have on communism, Fidel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is based mostly in propaganda. Okay. And it's based in the fact that Fidel gave, um, you know, the Black Panthers and Asada Shakur asylum. So now they see him as a hero. Uh, but they haven't experienced it. So the only thing I'm saying is like, you don't have to change your mind, but please listen to the people that live there and experienced things there. Because even the opinion, and I, you know, I'm very, very grateful for people like you, that even though you were not born there, you still give a person like me the platform. Because the reality is la oposición here, us, Black Cubans, we have two battles. We have a battle against communism and oppression, and we have a battle against the racist opposition. Mm -hmm. Because there is a mm -hmm. racist opposition that's not giving us a platform for us to express ourselves and let it be known, right, that, hey, we're still here and we oppress. We are in the bottom of the crap bucket, and you are not listening to us. So... I give thanks and praises because I was able to open the door for more Black Cubans to be heard. One of them, Dami, I met her in Miami. It was an mm -hmm. honor and a pleasure for me to meet her there. The reason was because majority of the opposition in this country, the, the, the Cubans, right, have been saying this stuff for years, for years, but nobody was listening because they were not speaking a language that everybody else understood. So it took me, a born Cuban, left Cuba at 20, to sit down in front of a phone and speak plain English, with a little bit of accent, but play, plain English, to then wake up. Everybody, oh my God, I didn't know that. Oh my goodness, oh my God. I can't even tell you how many podcasts interview me after that situation, after that happened. I can't even tell you how many like black blogs and stuff like that, because they just didn't know. Why? Because the opposition in this country, they got stuck in Miami and they kept speaking Spanish and they kept speaking to the same community and they kept going in circles. If we really want our voice to be heard, we need to speak the language that everybody else is speaking. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. With that said, I don't know what else needs to be said, but lo dijiste todo. My issue was um, I came from Cuba when I was one in the 60s. Yeah, if you know anything about Cuba and you know what was going on during that time, Los Barones was not allowed to leave. So I found out, and I'm a little older than most of you, I found out by the time I was 50, I found out that my mother had signed a document saying that she would send me back to Cuba at 18. Now, that also explained at the age of four why she had my, she married my, the man that raised me, my father, and he gave me his last name. I was adopted. So I went from Alexi Mora to Alexi Rene Garcia. And then, so that was to protect me to keep here. The, the name Naheem came from various things. Uh, one of them being uh, finding black awareness finding Islam, finding a few things that connected me to my blackness. But more importantly, when I got into the industry, I wanted to make sure that they were curious about somebody with a name like Naheem Garcia. Who's that? What is that? That is an Afro-Cuban. I did it for the simple fact that the black Hispanic needs a voice. They usually chump us off as West Indian. If we are Spanish, we're Dominican. But you know, soy Dominicano, I soy Cubano. I may not have the accent like the Cubano have in Cuba or in Miami, but yo era, yo soy Cubano aquí solito in Boston. Okay, me crié en una comunidad. Todo, todo, I'm sorry, I'm speaking Spanish. No, don't everybody, that, don't vote. Don't vote. Everybody, English, everybody that left Boston and New York went to New Jersey or Miami. Okay, La Comunidad aquí, Cubana, the Cuban community here had shrunk. In Center Street, Jamaica Plain, we had flooded. Everywhere you went in Jamaica Plain, there was Cubans. Then this happened during the 80s. When that happened, they all left. And then came the Marielito. Los Marielitos vinieron, everybody else released from all the crazy houses, the prisoners who the captive. Gato los sordó y los mandó para los Estados Unidos. Therefore, in the 80s, we had the madness with the cocaine business in Miami and the whole stigma que los cubanos son drug dealers in Cuba, da, 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 da. The most important thing for me is los cubanos somos bien políticos. 
we 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 brought art and and art and performance to the culture we brought lectures we brought everything to the community we're not just cubano que están aquí blah 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 we're very intelligent we made a very major contrib contribution to the world yep to the world on Because all levels we brought political our roots in our when it roots. comes to religion we preserved it mm -hmm. and brought it here to then the black community can tap into santeria palo mayombe Uh, aqua and all of those things we preserved that and brought it here you know so that la the comida sí, claro. la comida yeah. la música el arte i mean we're we're not shallow not a shallow community but we get overshadowed because we're black and they bunch us up but we have a voice. So Nahin Garcia was a, 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 was important because I wanted to make sure that they knew that there was a black Hispanic voice present and operating and moving. You know, back when I was coming up, there was a show called Beretta. And one of the characters was this black guy that was a pimp, but he was a Cuban man, a Cuban man that didn't have the opportunity to identify to his Latin, black Latin, Cuban culture. He had to bunch it up and be black, black American, but I'm not black American. I think in Spanish, I dream in Spanish, I talk Spanish, I feel Spanish, I feel my culture and my roots and that's important. Now, as an artist, I come from a family of artists. My mother danced for the International uh, 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 International Folklore Dance Company of Cuba. She was on the Olympic team. My grandmother sang at the Copacabana. My grandfather and I were, 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 were dancers. My, my biological father in Cuba and his brothers were singers and performers and very important in Cuba. When my mother got married with my father, it was a big parade, Cadillac, they was famous. But when I came from Cuba, for some reason, Everything was hush hush. The only thing I got was, tú no puedes regresar a Cuba. Tú no puedes regresar a Cuba. Tú nunca vas a regresar a Cuba. Olvida de tu padre y tu familia porque nunca los vas a ver. You know, and that's a very tough thing when you're coming up and you're in a community that does not identify, you know, people identify Hispanics as being but a pecan, tu sabe, Dominican. Puerto Rican. Everybody was Puerto Rican if you spoke Spanish, yeah. you know? And then later on there came the strong population of the Dominican. The only time you thought about Cuba is when you went to Miami, but we're all over the place, all over the place, making moves. And nobody knew that the CEO and president of 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 coca-cola and i'm guano mobile gas guano you know so we're we have contributed contributed to the community and the world in quite a big way but enough of that because i know there's a lot you want to address no nah, man i love it i love it man that's what we're here for man we we talking out man we might go overtime and depending on the mood y'all kind of in man we might, might we might make this a two-part episode man um I, i'll say this because i was originally born in new jersey So next to my oh, next to Miami, um, Jersey got like the most Cubans out there. So when I was there, exit fourteen, ya tu sabe, ya Union City, ya tu sabe. So I always had, you know, early ages that 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 Cuban thing that had the Cuban community, that Cuban thing. I had it, but then I ended up moving to Massachusetts. So the Massachusetts, it was a shell shock because it was nothing but Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, so and I had to learn their culture. And the thing that sucked about dealing with That system there, me, I felt that I was robbed. I felt I was robbed because I remember as a kid, all my friends during the summertime, even Dominica to Puerto Rican, they always went back to their island. They always went to their island and they're like, yo, I'm gonna go learn the culture. I'm gonna know how to speak Spanish to my abuela. I'm gonna go around the hood. I'm gonna do all that stuff. And every time they came back, they always learned something about their culture. I never got that. I missed that. It took me damn near. I think. The most I felt Cuban again when I was either in Miami or even in Mexico because Mexico has a little sneaky community out there that nobody knows about that has a lot of Cubans out there. I have an uncle that lives out there, and I felt Cuban out there, and it was just unbelievable. Like the more you get to know the history, you go to a big what the fuck moment. Like why they got to be like that? What happened? And I had to deal with two things. Now I had to deal with me being black in America. And now I had to go back to 20 plus years to like learn the culture that's going out there. 
and because of the things that I was so behind on, I didn't get a chance to, I didn't get the chance to see my grandmother till I was like 26 years old. It took me 26 years to see my grandmother. It took me damn near 30 years to see my other grandmother. So I missed the culture part. And I think that's the part that sucks about it because not only do you guys miss something because of politics, first generation people don't even get the chance to go back and forth. Even Cubans that I know for the moment, they still haven't gone to that. I still haven't gone there, never gone there. And I'm still going back and forth my mom because she didn't want me going over there because for her, Cuba is just deleted. And her mentality is I'm not going there until things change. And it, it just been a, a trip. Um, Dami, I got to ask you a question because I know you're half Cuban yeah. and half Dominican. So yeah. how was that trying to learn to those two cultures, and especially down in Brooklyn? Oh, man. So <laughs> growing up, I grew up in Bedside. So that's mainly like Caribbean, that's Haitian, that's Trinidadian, that's, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I grew up in Bedside. So Bedside is full of Caribbean people, you know, and um, I also grew up in Bushwick. So Bushwick's like a little Latin America. So you got Colombian, you got Ecuadorian, you got all these South Americans. So I'm like... It's like iffy because I like, because I'm black. I'm black at the end of the day. They only see me as that, just black mm-hmm. until I open my mouth. And then so they, hear, like, they hear the accent. Yeah. Yes. And they're like, oh, don't know who I am. <laughs> so I'm like, I explain, I'm like Cuban and Dominican. He's like, ah. And then the first thing I hear, ah, no parece Cubano, no parece Dominicano, but never met a Cuban or Dominican in my life. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Lord. Well, it's so well, well, when somebody doesn't break it. I get with the non-binary I hear, people. I, I can be a billionaire on how many times I've heard that. <laughs> you know, I you get know how I the mean? non-binary like, people feel when you don't identify to their non-binary. You know, it's I get yep. it. It's the same thing. Like, you don't see me for who I am. You yep. see me for what you think yeah, I exactly, am. Exactly, exactly. That's what I am. Um, I had a situation too, and I have an, I had another video a video that went viral because I and I respect the thing is my thing is I'm very open to discussion and conversation, mm-hmm. and I have my opinion. I'm very opinionated, and but I that doesn't take away from me giving somebody else respect to their opinion. You keep yours. I have mine. I'm gonna change mine when I feel it's okay for me to change it. You mm-hmm. doesn't matter what you tell me. You know, so I said what I said because I'm big on nationality. I study under the Moors, so I'm big on nationality, heritage, and ethnicity. They are not the same thing. So nationality is where you're born, right? right. So your ethnicity is, you know, and then your heritage is whoever you descend from, right? So uh, they keep, you know, I said I was, I was just trying to, you know, and it was a conversation between. Latinos, right? It was uh, uh, Cubans, mo- mostly Cubans, you know, first generation and stuff like that. We was having a, a conversation and for some reason, the black community felt attacked for what I said when the conversation was not with them, first of all, because you guys only accept me when you want to. Let's just start by mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm having a conversation with my okay. people, stay there, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, they got mad at me because I say, I was not born in Africa, so I don't want to be called Afro-Cuban. I was born in Cuba, so I'm Cuban. Cubana. Okay. Okay? So, and I said, you know why? Because this Afro thing creates division. We already divided enough in the Cuban community to create more division. We never call ourselves Afro-Cuban until we came to this country and we start getting mixed up with the bunch. And the term Mm. Afro was born in the 70s in this country before they were not called Afro-African-Americans. So I have to adopt a label that never really belonged to me. I know where I'm from. I know where I'm from. I know my nationality. I am born and raised Cuban. Mind you, I have friends from Ghana. I have my mother-in-law lives in Tanzania, my, my children's grandmother, all of that, Ethiopia, their grandfather's from Ethiopia, from the that side. Guess what they call me? Cuban. My name Afro Cuban. Cuban. They don't but, call me Afro. No. Yeah. No, Afro. They that's that's Afro. so Americano. So Americano. Not even so. Liberians. They don't call me Afro. Nothing. No, no, Cuban. no. Oh, you're Cuban. Oh, you're black Cuban. Oh, you're Cuban. Yeah, you. We all brothers. We all brothers and sisters. <laughs> Right? <laughs> but never put the Afro label because it's redundant. My mm. melanin says it already, that that's my heritage. 
So Ale, why Ale. do you remind Ale. you? Exactly. That was a big <laughs> argument. Oh, gosh. They, oh. Gracie, you, you are fire, mami. De verdad. Oye. Me gusta. I, 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 estoy así. I love her. <laughs> Oye, no, oh. pero tú sabes que I, 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 I didn't get a chance to grow up in a Cuban community. I had to grow up with the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans and always had to make sure that I maintain my identity because you're right. I am Cuban. Mm -hmm. I'm not Dominican. I'm not Afro. I'm not. I am Cuban. I'm a Cuban man who happens to be black. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the new one. Ahora que estamos con el Afro Latino, the new terminology. Latinx. <laughs> Latinx. Latinx. Yeah. Latinx. Yeah. Latinx. Latinx. I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna let this a book. And I'm we, gonna we, upset we, a few we, people right now. Get upset. We're talking that talk, baby. Right We're talking that talk. We out here. I'm upset, upset a few people. Felt... First of all, it's very convenient that all my butter pecan brothers and sisters can now identify to being Afro Cuban or Afro Latino. But last year, what did you identify as? European or white? You never identified as black. You definitely wasn't identified as Afro-Latino. Ever since I signed an application for a job, I would put black Hispanic because they there was no list for me. I said black Hispanic, other, mm -hmm. black Hispanic. Other. It was important <laughs> for my voice and my identity to be heard. Mm -hmm. Don't dismiss me mm -hmm. because you think, I because yeah, I could talk like a brother. I could move like a brother because I'm a brother from another country, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. But but they have to respect your nationality, though. Nationality has to be respected. And the reason I said what I said is because I know in my heart that Cuba will be free and it's going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, I don't, I, want, I don't want the white Cubans with all due respect See? count me out of the piece of the pie. I'm going to receive the same piece of pie, Amen. the very Amen. same piece of slice as any Cuban. Don't discount me because labels create separation. Claro que sí. Mm -hmm. claro que sí. mm -hmm. yep. Separate me. Take off the Afro. I'm Cuban just like you. And I'm going to receive the same amount of wealth transfer as you. Ah, and we're sí. going to rebuild that country together. And we're all going to benefit the same. And you put in the work and you put in the work as much as even harder, even harder being a black woman, even so, harder. So those, mm -hmm. I, I know because I know because I know because I was born and raised there and I know how racist that country is. See. I know how colorist that country is. Oh, yeah. I know it from experience. So oh. don't count me out. I don't want oh. no lady. It's all don't, good. Don't, don't, don't count me out. Listen, okay. I remember one time when I was in Miami. Hold, hold that thought, hold that thought, hold that thought, because we're going under a minute, so I'm going to send another link, so we'll see. Just keep going. If you see the thing going, I'm going to send you guys another link, but continue. Okay. Go ahead. I was, uh, I was in Miami, hablando con un cubano que de España, and let's just put it like that, un cubano yeah. que identifies European, y hablando en español, and he tried with everything he could with his terrible English accent to keep speaking to me in English, and I went, just like this, te estoy hablando en español, chico. He said, ay, Dios mío, Disculpa. Y entonces empezó de nuevo con el inglés. He would not identify or respect the fact that I was speaking to him in his own language. He didn't see me, therefore he did not hear me. Mm -hmm. And I've been struggling with that all my life. The white man didn't accept me because I was black. The blacks didn't accept me because I was a different kind of black. And yeah, Latino, Latino because yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. Latino yeah. Because yeah. Because habla español. Porque, porque, mm. porque, porque, porque no me veía como ellos. I remember when I was, I lived in Jamaica playing Eggleston Square in, 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 in Boston, a very Puerto Rican community. And I remember my friend, he was some of the most racist. Right. I said, eso me tenía encendido. Cubans are some of the most racist individuals, the, 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 the white Cubans. But in Cuba, from my understanding, was a different story. Todo el mundo tenía su, su sitio, los mulatos tenían su sitio, los negritos, todo el mundo, pero nadie estaba con eso de, mi mamá y mi tía me dicen todas las veces, nadie estaba con eso de que tú eres esto y tú eres aquello, el cubano es cubano. Pero las cosas cambiaron cuando vinimos aquí. Porque aquí todo es una mezcla y toda esa operación. I noticed um, a lot of, you know, I went to school with, come on, everybody, everybody and their mama. We don't have a problem, okay? I had a, one of my good friends, blonde, blue eyes. Mi hermana, my sister. People would look at us crazy, right? Because that's mi hermana, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
it I did experience racism in Cuba. I'm not gonna act like I didn't. I did. Um especially when it came to like um like job applications, like you know, work. And when it I mean, came I mean, to, like, yeah, the same yeah, thing. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead. No worries, no worries. Um, because I, I wanted to, you know, shit. I wanted to be bailarina tropicana. You know, I wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Tenía miedo que esa negra iba a venir y era una tormenta que iba a tumbar a todo el mundo y todo el mundo, oye, ¿dónde está la negra esa? Y es el problema porque la negra tiene atención que ellos no tienen. H, H. So, you know, but I have to thank um, the guys from Cuban Freedom March. Yeah, salute. salute. Cuban Freedom March, mm -hmm. even though they are like you know, most of them are white, white descendants, first generation born here, but they just operate different. They operate different. Yeah. It is something, I don't know. It is something about this new generation born here. They operate different. They all about inclusion. They pull me right in. That day in Miami that I met Dami, I wasn't supposed to talk. I was just there because I was just there. They pull me in. They're like, come, come to the stage and talk. You need to represent. They need to see you. They, they need to hear you. You know, I give thanks to the people from Forward Miami, uh, Damian Palante. Uh, he is, he was, a, still is, a very, like, fiery um, fighter for gay rights, Latino gay rights, a Cuban man here in Miami. Uh, he was one of the, he's one of the reasons why, they stop, you know, like disc discrimination in workplaces and stuff like that against gay people and things like that. He's been a very big, big voice. He is, um, you know, the one that's behind Forward Miami and Palante, um, Palante Miami. Yeah. And he gave me a couple months ago the New Voice Award in his Forward Miami event. Um, was that the one? Of, wait, was that the one you were wearing blue? That's the one I was in blue. Yeah. That's the one that my mom saw you at from the Otaola show. The Otaola. He put you on there. So that's when he. All right. Um, well, wait. So, yo salí dos veces por Otaola. I didn't know it because I. Yeah. And that, and that, and that, and that, that clip, Otaola put that episode. He put that clip when you were on stage and you spoke. You were in blue. Oh. Short hair. Yeah. That's where I saw you at. And I'm like, yo, it's her again. And I'm like, why the hell she just keep popping in my life like they leave me? My video speaking against Black Lives Models that yeah. I look like, I look like crap. My mm -hmm. hair was too short. I was sitting with a white t-shirt just on my couch. Oh, that yeah. one I, salió con todo respeto. Mija, I don't think yo creo que tú con un mapa en la cabeza no te debes man. <laughs> okay, enough of that. You black beautiful Cuban women, cut it out. Cut it. Both of y'all cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out because you can wake up in the morning. Beautiful black women don't got to do all that makeup, all that. Mi mamá se pone un maquillaje y mi mamá es bonita. Mi hermana bonita, pero un maquillaje, pero son precios. No, te enseño una foto, mujeres, pero bella, bella. So stop that. Keep, you may continue. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't know that video was in Otaola too. I didn't yes, know. He put that clip on. He put that clip. I have to find it. I have it. I put it on my website. I put it on my social media. I tag you. Oh, I have to find it. Yeah. I, I never, I, ne, I, I knew the other one. I knew the other one, the LK, you are playing contra the Black Lives Matter, diciéndole que ellos eran una, you know, that they have a communist agenda because they say viva Fidel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ay, oh, Dios mío. Can I get on that one? Go ahead. Sí, Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead. Black Black and that's is how, so and, this, Black and that's Black what I asked you, remember what? in Miami? <laughs> If you are for black lives, guess what? The black Cubans matter too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You cannot be just for black American lives. You mm -hmm. have to be for all black lives. All black lives. That's right. Yeah. No, for okay. Black, 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 okay. Well, I got to get on it. Uh, Don, Don, I'm sorry. I, before no, I forget, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Black lives matter. So I was on GBA uh, 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 Channel 2, one of those black shows, Hablando. And they said black lives matter. And I said, black lives won't matter till they matter to black people. He said, Bonion bien serio, calladito, for the simple reason. The majority of black 
deaths in the black com and Hispanic community is not done by the police, but by the black and Hispanic people living in the community yeah. themselves. They don't want to hear that. So when they, was, they, when they were that. killing Floyd, when they were killing Floyd, Tito and Juan were having a damn shootout on, on, on Jamaica Plain Projects, on East Street Projects. Yeah. On Bowdoin Ave, they was doing another killing. All this happening all simultaneously and then afterwards. Please talk about it. Listen. Yeah. When, when, who? Pick, pick one. Go ahead. Is a black woman being either killed or raped every five and a half hours. Yeah, it's yeah. not being done by the white man and it's not being done by the police. No. It's being done by the own very own men that was that are supposed to protect us, sí. uplift us, help sí. us heal, dale. and provide for us. Dale, dale, dale. Mm. So mm -hmm. you cannot tell me I am good enough mm -hmm. to come out there and protest for you, bail you out of jail, mm -hmm. um, and, and defend you right and jump in your wagon for that but then when i want to be protected and provided for i cannot turn turn to my own man and i believe that has a cellular memory okay this is deep this has this needs deep healing because it's deep okay the i don't like my own people syndrome oh yeah but isn't it convenient that they allowed during a pandemic when nobody was supposed to be doing anything but being isolated, they allowed a protest to happen during COVID. How convenient mm -hmm. that you wanted us to be able to have our rights during a time when you knew when the population would get together during a pandemic that the majority mm -hmm. of these people would come up very sick, even though it was outside, that had nothing to do with mm -hmm. all the people hugging and doing all this business outside during a pandemic that could be sick okay so i thought it was a very convenient way for some genocide to happen while they allow black people to protest about what was happening with police brutality first of all i don't know why you shocked about some police brutality because the police has been killing again the black folks for years so that ain't nothing new the mm -hmm. thing that i want to see is when are you going to protest and go down in the street and tell tito and tyrone that we're not going to let you sell no more drugs here we're not going to mm -hmm. let you do your gang violence we're not mm -hmm. going to allow you to be beating your mm -hmm. women we're not going to let you walk around here with your pants mm -hmm. down to your ankles we're not gonna allow you to act like you got fool when you're in school you're supposed to be getting educated we're not gonna mm. allow you to fail us because it's convenient for you so mm. when it when, when you want to talk about black lives matter let's stop let it stop mattering to us because mm. i get the big picture but the real internal problem is that we are constantly at it like my sister said in this country labels titles and everything else causes separation as long as they keep exactly. us separated they can control us and they can master us yeah. that's what the lessons say as long yeah. as they keep us blind to ourselves they can master us that's what the lessons say because even crazy. though i'm cuban and raised in a christian home i'm a man of islam check that yeah. out yeah. 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 I know, when you said okay. when you said more, I said okay. <laughs> I study under the Moors. They can't tell me nothing. I I've read the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. They cannot tell me nothing about history because I'll sit you and give you a history lesson. I had to do it like that. I had to do it like that because since you are not putting since you know since. The whites want to put me in the same bucket, right? But the blacks don't want me in their bucket because mm -hmm. I'm Latina to them, right? Mm -hmm. Then guess what? I am going to, you know, study, right? I am going to study and I'm going to teach you that, okay, you stay in your bucket if you want. But if you decide to reclaim your nationality, your aboriginal rights, right? You are the original man of these lands. You are the original man, the maker, mm -hmm. the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, the god mm -hmm. of civilization. Oh, well, come the on, stop. The world was coming mm -hmm. back and forth here, establishing commerce, right? That's why when these people saw the, the, the boats from the white people, they didn't get afraid because they, were, they already saw it. If it was something new, they would attack it because you always attack what's not familiar. But because mm -hmm. it was familiar, That's they true. embraced them. And, and they, they got, and they got the tricked. Yeah. And then they got they tricked. Got, got tricked. Mm. Why is that? Because the Moors were already coming and establishing commerce and, and making babies. Because the Moors always want to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so Dami, 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 yeah. Wait, so Dami, being from Brooklyn, 
you are, you already know I, I'm on, I'm a five percenter. Mm -hmm. So you know you from Brooklyn. So you know you go to Fort Greene, you see the big rallies. They were just there. So you know that. So you know, and coming into that, the reason why I embrace Islam because it identified God mm -hmm. and blackness. In the church, I didn't see, I saw the Jesus blonde head. I saw everything that did not identify or look like me in all, especially after looking at slavery and they justify slavery through the book, through the Bible, through the Bible. They believe mm -hmm. that the Bible gave them the right to enslave black people. So therefore I started yeah. to look at this and now mind you, my mother's an apostle, my father's an apostle, my aunt and uncle's a deacon in the Christian world. Cristiano de Verdad. And mm -hmm. I love and respect the Christian faith because it allowed me to have some kind of a substance and love for the true and living and the most high. But at the end of the day, when I identify God and, and 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 the belief of something spiritual to myself, I was able to identify to this 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 teachings to black people, and I embraced it because it spoke to me. But at the same time, I had to look at my Hispanic or my my Latin culture and try to understand how that fits in. So now, when I'm in the community and I'm talking about you know that the black man he got that and boom boom boom, that became a whole nother a whole nother obstacle because my people. Okay, my people, those that were not conscious were in a, in a very deep place, in a very hard place. And it just became a wall, a constant wall that I constantly hit all mm -hmm. the time until I realized I don't have to teach you. I have to teach the babies. Mm. Yeah, You got to mm. talk to the babies and what's coming up. You got to rearrange their mindset because you can't teach the old dog new tricks. That's not your job. My job mm -hmm. is not to help grandma and grandpa, and mommy and poppy, except give them a place to live and make sure they're not abandoned. My responsibility is to the babies, the children, mm -hmm. and making sure they understand. Like I tell all my kids, I say, you may not speak your language. One of them do. They understand it, but they don't want to speak. I say, and now that they're getting older or they're a lot older because my children are grown, they're sitting there going, well, you know, uh, Bobby, why didn't you teach? I know I taught you Spanish. You just didn't embrace it. You didn't uh, practice it. Mm -hmm. Even I, when I came to this country, I got to a point where I lost my Spanish, my Spanish accent, everything. And I took myself to Miami very early. Pasó un tiempo ahí. I came back and I never lost it. The little that I got, I kept. I told them, Q, you don't, tú no te ves cubano, o tú no eres cubano, tú naciste aquí. Oye, let me see that. Mm -hmm. Nací aquí, pero mantenía mi, cu mi cubanés. Yo solito, aquí en Cuba, si está en Cuba. Mm -hmm. So let me know how you, how, what you think about that, that I could keep my identity, my culture, and my love for my country and my island and my people here in this country where they was separating, carving me, this died this dicing me up i kept it and i kept it here by myself no matter what i i looked i studied i when i walked in my house it was cool you could be english you could be a brother you could be black power panther whatever you want when you mm -hmm. walk in this house and it's like i said no matter in english and I tell you, my grandmother came to this country, had a master's in education, and became a Boston public school teacher. My aunt had a master's in education and became a public a Boston public school teacher. And after 25 years, retired assistant principal from Miami. My mother, because I dropped out of high school in Madison Park High School in ninth grade, she wanted to show me that getting a GED was easy. Not only did she get a GED, four masters and three doctorates later in theology. Mm. Cubana entera, educada en español y en inglés. Ok, para enseñarme a mí that you can do it. And I got to look back and say, these are the shoulders I stand on. These three black women that brought me from Goa were educated, had their own home, had their own property, raised all their children. And now I'm looking at generations and generations of my bloodline. Cuando yo estaba aquí era solito, los cubanos se fueron. And now that I'm here with you all, you don't know how I, I have to stay connected to you. I have to talk to you. I have to reach out to you. I have to call you every now and then. I want to mm -hmm. see you. I want to hug you. I want to mm -hmm. embrace you because I didn't grow up with that. Now that I'm older, that I get a lot of it. I don't want to let it go. So no me dejen. No, no, me dejen. no, 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 me dejen. Yeah, out here. no, me dejen. Mira, y el número y todo lo voy a dejar aquí en el chat. Me llaman. <laughs> Man, yeah, I'm, uh, we have to because if we don't present a united front as a Cuban young people, because like I said, go that Guano. When you walk in there, it's not gonna look like you. Mm. I'm not yeah. disrespecting it. I think it's important, but it's important that we make it a point to make sure okay, that all Cubans, 
Not just a blanquito or de español, lo que sea. All Cubans are recognized in our Cuban cultural community. It is important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And I keep, telling, I keep telling the white Cubans, I keep telling them, since you guys have kind of like the, the upper hand in this whole fight, you have to open a little bit, a bridge, just a little tiny bridge for us because we are going to be the key to a bigger community. With the original, with the origin of their, they with their origin. Reach so many people. The black community is not listening to what the white Cubans want to say. They're not. They're, they're not. not listening. They mm -hmm. don't care about our struggle because they don't see nobody that represent them. That's why when I did what I did and I said what I said and my video went viral, I got so much attention from the black community. And now they're listening. And now they're trying to figure out. And now they're trying to learn. And now they're asking questions. How come for the last 60 years they didn't? Because they because ignored nobody us. Was mm -hmm. nobody like was said, speaking the language. Nobody was speaking like them. Nobody, nobody was talking nobody to them. Speaking the language. And the language is not only English. The language is color. Two, you can be speaking English, but if you look white, they don't want to hear you. They don't care what you got to say because you're no me that do the Afro Latino because it's convenient now. Yeah. If two years ago, you were Thanks, identifying say, as thank different. You. Two years ago, you were European and you were white and you didn't thank identify. You. I never had that choice. I'm always and forever will be black and black. And I'm a, I'm a Cuban man that happens to be black period. And I love it. And I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. And I am very grateful to be here in the presence of my air likes. Cubano como yo. Criado cubano aquí o allá en Cuba, pero criado cubano. Y aquí estamos nosotros hablando con, con, el, con el acento cubano, con la riqueza cubana, con el espíritu cubano. Oh yeah, I can't get enough of y'all, man. And, and I, because I got I gotta get ready because I gotta travel and, and everything. Yeah. Else. But yeah. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I put my email, I put everything, my chat. I want to do this again. I wouldn't mind doing it as much. I have other podcasts that I'd love to invite y'all so they can yeah. hear what I, so they can know I'm not alone. Yeah. I am not alone. Yes. We out here, man. We out yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate yes. you no, all, man. We got to keep the contact. Support. We need to support whatever you guys, you know, have going on. You Yo know. Got her. I could go to Providence. It don't matter. But I'm in Randolph. Yeah. And nothing but a skip, hop, and a jump. You about to, you about you less than forty minutes away. So if we gotta come out, we come out. We gotta we gotta we gotta we gotta carpool. We carpool. If you're doing an event, we need to show up wearing our colors, letting them know. Los cubanos estamos aquí vivo y fuerte. Fin me adelante. I actually want to do an event in um in uh, Boston. I want to like figure out an um venue uh, because I hope. I host events all over the country. It's called Witches and Wine. So I want to do the Boston edition. Um, and it's also a platform to kind of educate women on the struggle that Cuban women go through. I got, I got you on that. that. I got you on that. I know exactly that. the place. You talking to exactly the place. mayor of Boston, mommy. Don't worry about it. We can make it work. We'll find a place. We'll find a place. Okay, mira, mi hermano, mi hermana. Que Dios lo bendiga a todos. Right. Wait, before you leave, before you leave, before you leave, before you leave, okay. one more thing, oh, one thing. Oh, before oh, you leave, oh, oh, one more thing. <laughs> you, you, wanna, you wanna put the plug? You wanna put the plug? No, you put the plug, because I'm gonna sit here and listen to what you okay, got to Okay, okay, my, my man, my man's right here. He's He sent me a uh, he sent me a text, and it was a trailer for a movie. So you're gonna catch him. It's gonna be in October? It's coming in October? Yep, yep. He's gonna be in Hocus Pocus 2. You catch the trailer, he's out there, he's in the movie. You got I, I, I he, made the trailer. I made, made the trailer. trailer. He made the trailer. So get extras. Get extras. Because me and Alex, we go there and be extras. Bueno, bueno yeah. la película está hecha. <laughs> Mija, su so electa se fue y vino y se fue. Okay. <laughs> Pero mira, no, it's been, I got to be, I, I'm very humble. It's been a yeah. very humbling year from July to, from July of last year to present. I had the pleasure of, of filming six movies and it, it went from um, the uh, Spirited with Ryan Reynolds and, um, and Will Farrell uh, uh, to I Just Want to Dance with Somebody, the Whitney Houston movie, to Hocus Pocus 2. And then I got 
my supporting actor position in a movie called The Holdovers with Paul Giamatti and a director under Alexander Payne. And I just finished doing Money Game and I just do, finished doing a movie this past weekend called um, Tire Town, which is a fake name, but it was with the sister named Zandaya Collins, who is a, a great actress. I got the chance to play her father. Uh, and so, you know, it, it was just a pleasure, and 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 I and 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 then I'll be hopefully in a few weeks I'll be filming uh, a Sony Marvel movie, and I'll leave it like that. Yes, and, go, let's go. Uh, no. Make a pro, Naim. <laughs> Hello, and I and I never ever 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 deny I constantly wave the flag of being a Cuban man. Uh, that happens to be black, an actor that happens to be black and very proud of it. And I would never trade it in the world. And I would go through busting and all that crap I went through all these years just to be in this place right now, looking at myself in these four cubes and saying, man, we have come a long way and we are coming hard and we are coming rich and we're coming beautiful. I got articulate sisters. I got our brothers doing bra. I mean, we in a good place. So as long as we stay united and as long as we continue to support each other, other will become a force to, to be reckoned with. So, Ache, 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 Ache. And, and as we like to say in the five percent circle, peace, peace, peace. God, peace, peace. God. Peace. peace. All right, peace, man. All right, we're about to wrap this up, but I got two more. You could, all right, so I'm, I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you. All right, all right. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Placer, un placer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Call, call, oh, no. email. No, right? I will take care of you. We'll get you down here. No problem. All right. Well, we're about to wrap this up. I've got like two more questions I had to ask. Like, actually, a long list, but you know, I'll finish up with these last two. I know everybody got things to do, even though we had to start at 8.30, but you know, CPT is live in effect out in the streets. So um, <laughs> we'll never get it right with time, guys. We'll never get it right. Um, <laughs> one, one of the things I wanted to ask both of y'all, uh, particularly Gracia, when you went viral, you know, July 11th, right around the corner. So have you seen, you know, any, how can I say this? Any some sort of prosperity within your circle? Like, you know, did your people got it? And do you feel that you got at least more allies? Like, has more questions has been asked? Has they been more curious? Or, because I I will say on my end, I will say 90 to 95% that I, my circle, my people, they got it. They understand what happened after July 11. They they saw the issue. They didn't know. And the one thing I want to tell Naheem before he left, what was dope about not, um, July 11, it was us. When that protest happened, when I mean us, it was black people I mean the black hoods taking it to the streets. It wasn't the white ones. It wasn't even the town with no Asian ones. It was black people in the streets and these black hoods mm -hmm. that took it out there and said, we had enough. So the color looked a little bit different this time around. It wasn't the folks on Miami. Um, a year done came by. And like I said, 95% of my people got, you got the other five for whatever reason, Dami, Dominicans, you're you're half there. I don't know what it is. They got this Listen, thing with Cash. No, I don't. They, they got this Listen, thing with. They, they got this thing. This pisses me off. Less on us, on us, on us. I have a friend of mine. Get me started. I got a friend of mine who's half Cuban and half Dominican, and like you know, I heard her story of hell coming over here, and I don't know what is it. Where I mean, they're not married anymore, the baby daddy, but mm. she tells them one thing, and then like the dad tells them like you don't. Know, now your mom's exaggerating. Ain't really like that. Like he she he's praising that thing and like dismissing the mom's struggle. And the best way I could give you an example is like, I don't know, it's like picture being a biracial kid and you have a black dad and a white mom and your dad telling you, yo, you being that skin color, you're going to go to A, B, C, D, E, just be aware of, you know, when you're in this and the third. And then your, your, your white mom's telling you, your dad's exaggerating. All you got to do is work hard and color's not an issue. And it's just like, a, just, just ignore that. You know, if you just work hard and progress, then you get to and race won't be an issue. So with that being said, after the following year, has anybody, has things within your circles been a little bit different? Has it, you know, the awareness, you know, get people to ask you more questions? Because they ask me questions and I'm glad he's happy to give them answers. Oh man, on the Cuban side, yes. Like when I went to Miami, like that just like, I received a lot of love when I met Grecia. Yo, I just broke down because I saw another black Cuban who understands so I didn't even have to say nothing to her. That's why you see the picture. Like I'm, I'm embracing her, and no, she's embracing me too. I have that picture. Oh my is god! So I made her. I know. I I made her cry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but she understands. So I'm like, it feels so good. It felt good. It, it felt good. It felt um, so good to someone embrace me without even saying a word. 
Yeah. That's it. I just saw her. I saw her in the crowd and I'm like, okay. Like my girl Nina, she's you um, know we were oh. surrounded by cute like that picture, my my madrina, which is a white woman, my, my godmother, mm -hmm. she took the picture. The block a couple blocks asked me for the picture because mm -hmm. that picture is so meaningful. There was no yeah. words. She didn't have to tell me nothing. I didn't have to tell her nothing. I saw her. Which she I just embraced her. me. That was it. We both started crying. Both of us with Cuban flags on us. Mm -hmm. Two people embracing And then shot. I asked her, what is she blocked by um, Black Lives Matter Foundation? <laughs> 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 I was like, yes, we were. Ha we had fun. I was like, yes. Yeah. So the block by Black, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> so in, in my circle, I'm I'm grateful. I have people that are very uh, receptive. So in my circle, it was just you know qu a, a lot of questions. Um, not just my circle. It, ha it's, it has extended because I already had a following before July 11 last year mm -hmm. on Insta, mm -hmm. but it was a spiritually based following because of the line of work that I do. Now I was able to educate my followers from all backgrounds. I have followers of all types of backgrounds on what's really going on in Cuba and open their eyes and their perspective. And it had been a blessing. It has been a blessing. We were for a month straight sending money to the Cuban phones so that they can connect to Telegram when that happened July 11, thanks to my followers, it was all donations from my followers. You know, they donated and we was sending people from the from the opposition Dinero, dinero, directamente, directly to their phones, directly to them, mm. you know, and that was a blessing that was, you know, so I'm, I'm grateful. I'm that's, actually grateful. That's, that's, dope. that's dope. I want to share a quick story with you guys, because when the thing happened, I actually went to D.C. with my mother. So I was in D.C. for the manifestation. I was there for about four or five days. And um, shout out to my mom, because she actually gave me the idea to actually do this, just to try to find anybody within the community that's willing to talk. But um, before we went, there was a Sunday. I remember clearly. It was a Sunday. And the one thing she was saying, like, yo, where are the black people at? Where are the black people at? I, I know I know we're here. Like, why won't they talk? And then, you know, she's being all gloomy and stuff and just being a pessimist. She's like, oh, they don't care about the show. They care about, like, drinking, partying, fucking, just sending money to Cuba and taking care of their family and just maintaining them. And, you know, when we went to the actual White House, oh, my God, the black folks that came out there for that particular day. I don't know, I guess people decided not to work that day or what it could be, but it was so many black folks I met that day. And I met so many people between my mother's age and as, like, old as my grandfather's age, and I was able to have conversations with them and get stories out of them. But the one thing I kept getting from everybody that lived from that era was the indoctrination that they were giving up to the black, particularly for the black community. So there was one thing that every person told me they used to have these commercials or like something to an equivalent of a PSA. And it was like something about telling black Cubans not to go to America because this will happen. So this is like the 60s, 50s or whatever. And it's showing these videos of black people here in America with the fire hose, the dogs, the church bombing, the Ku Klux Klan, the cops beating the black people. It was all that stuff. So it's like basically the commercial was saying, long story short, you don't want to go out there because they're going to treat you like that. So take our bullshit. Take exactly. our bullshit. Oh, yeah. Because over there, you're going to treat you like That's that. What my mom told me. Yeah. And it was my grandfather that for years he wanted to leave. And, you know, because, of course, everything was so suppressed with information. He was like, I don't give a fuck if I got to deal with those cops. I don't care if I got to deal with the church bomb. I don't care. If I got to at least take a rest and see with my eyes because I don't believe that system. I don't believe it. And I don't, I'll, I'll fight a dog and get bite to get because he unfortunately he has his own tragic story that he got harassed by the police, got beaten, went to jail, et cetera, et cetera. So he has his own little PTSD he had to go through with that system. But everybody told me the same story. And even when my mom, I think my mom told you, when she came over here, she was paranoid to come to certain streets and go to certain neighborhoods. Cause he, the first thing she thought was like, dogs coming after her. They thought they're gonna, gonna be a police. Me. They're gonna kill you. I can't cross the street. I'm mother, cause it was a predominantly black neighborhood. It was predominantly a black Puerto Rican um, community. She, you know, she was black, so she was able to navigate to both sides. But then when she was able to talk to the Puerto Ricans, they were like, you're good out here. They haven't done that to them for like in 10 years. So you don't worry about that. You don't have to go to that. They haven't done that. With these, the laws change, people know this stuff. And she's talking to my dad. She's like, oh my God, this motherfucker Castro fucking lied to us for all these years. They fucking lied. They fuck. And the thing about it was that the people over there don't even know that things are changing. And they're still showing videos from the 60s about, you know, the church bombings and cops getting out. Yes, black that's big. That's the indoctrination they be, directed, directed mostly to the blacks, to the yeah. blacks in Cuba, where 
you better stay with us and be grateful to us that we're giving you a little bit of free food and some mediocre education yeah. and some mediocre, you know. That's help. free. That's free. Okay. <laughs> uh, the free education. That's free. The free education. I'd rather pay and receive good education, good health care, and, you know, and eat whatever the hell I want to eat. Right. But um, they make you feel like, oh, you better be so grateful to us. You better you better make it. And then, like I said it in the video that went viral for girls that look like me, majority of the times the only escape they have is sexual tourism. So we need to go put ourselves out there and hopefully somebody grant us a visa to take us out of the country. Hopefully somebody want to marry us. There we go. Of the country yeah. hopefully somebody like our ass enough you know to get us out of that prison and the thing that sucks about it, you gotta deal with disgusted old man that's losing his hair wrinkled up just fetishizing black women and you hopefully that that fetish actually leads to marriage or some sort of love so it's ridiculous it's beyond ridiculous mm -hmm. you know so oh my god there's so many things i want to ask you guys but you know we're gonna be pressed for time and you know zoom's gonna give me the rundown or whatever but um, please, um, again, thank y'all. Thank y'all for thank you. being with me, even though with the technical difficulties. Um, I, um, if you guys are up for it, I would like to do this on my station at least once a month and just break bread with you guys. And just, cause there's like so many things I wanted to ask you guys and you know, certain individuals that couldn't make it. I know Naheem's down. We spoke, he sent me a text. He wants to do something with you guys at least once a month and just do whatever yeah. we can to like bring awareness. Um, Dami, I have yet to meet you yet. So I don't know what you're doing sometime in this month of July. You know, we'll go to Don't well, Let me know. Spring. I'm actually going to Washington D.C. in the honor in the one one year manifestation. I might head out there. Uh, head me out too. There. I'm there. Yeah. No. All right then. I, well, let's see before because we're all in New England, so I'm like 90 minutes at least from you. I'm like 30 minutes from you. Let's not take yeah. a trip. Out there. Let's not go backwards. No. Let's, <laughs> no. Right. Right. Yeah. Let, let, let's set something up or whatever because I y'all the only two I've been met on a personal level so you know whatever the case may be I'm gonna rely in whenever I can I'm in Boston basically weekly so mm -hmm. yes let's 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 link and break bread and then talk more oh, Cuban please. shit that's it yeah. take us out yeah, take we us can out. go to Doña yes. Havana let's go yeah Doña Havana <laughs> yeah um, yeah I got oh. you I got you this was on me sweetie this was on me I got you I got you <laughs> Got you. That's my spot. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> but are you for me? Have you? you have Jason, a reason I, to get dressed and put heels on. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will come. I will come with short hair. I come with your nose. Wait, wait. Which one I'm getting in here? I'm getting nose. I'm getting earrings. I'm getting short hair. Who I'm getting? I'm no. You, the earrings. I love all her looks. You don't know who you're getting that day. Yeah, it's a thing. Surprise, surprise. All right, uh, 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 I'll take it's it. Libra. She's full of surprises. Yeah. <laughs> like that blonde hair. Who knows? Yeah. You, you, just look. <laughs> Just don't come with no green. Don't come with no green hair, right? Okay? If you got some green hair, we have a serious conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, check this out. Yeah, this is your boy, Cuban Mike. You've been listening to Waddle Two Point Nine Take Deck in collaboration with the Ruckus Man. This has been the Black Cuban episode, and this will not be the last time you're going to hear from us. We got a lot to say, a lot of our mind, and you know we're just going in. So until the next time, man. Thank you for coming out, and I'll catch you the next episode, y'all. Peace. Ah, that was fun, guys. That was fun. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, man. Um, I need some. I need some snippets of what what happened here, so I can put it. We can make it real. So I put it on Instagram. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold. Wait. I'm gonna wait till. The, um, I'm not gonna do it this week. It's gonna be July Fourth weekend. I know. I kind of know in social media. They don't really be acting like that. But the following week, that's gonna be around the July 11th week. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give. I'm gonna work on some clips. And I'm gonna send y'all to y'all by um the following. Tuesday or Wednesday coming up. So I'm going to cut and paste and I'm going to send y'all like pretty much the highlights of the thing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it nice and pretty for y'all. And yes, and yes, share it. Share it. Let it be known. Of course. Yeah, yeah. That way we can also share your, you know, your podcast and stuff and people can start yeah, like and listening. promote and promote. Yeah. yeah. Club. Yeah, all right. So, all right. We're going to be under like 30 seconds. So we're about to like hack out by itself. But yo, love you guys. Catch you next time. Hey, love y'all. Dami, love you. Love you. Oh, hold up. The picture. That picture that you had with her? I got it. I'll send it to you on IG. Send it to me. Send it to me. It to I me. got you. And I'm going oh, yeah. to tag you the yeah. video that you was in. You were in blue? I got that. I'm going to send it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Later. <laughs> Later.